Okay, good morning everybody. I'm coming to you live from my bathroom here and I was requested to do a makeup tour and show you guys my minimalist makeup collection. So I'm gonna show you in detail the makeup items that I use as well as some of my must-have makeup products. So the first thing that I will start with is sunscreen and I wear sunscreen every single day even when the sun isn't shining because I've recently learned about how important it is to be making sure you're wearing it even if you live in a high altitude climate that doesn't have really intense sunlight. So it's really important to protect your skin against the damaging effects of UVA and UVB rays um, in regards to aging as well as skin damage that can potentiate things like skin cancers and things like that. So if you're looking for something that is anti-aging, sunscreen is the best thing that I can recommend. So I kind of bounce back and forth between these three here. These are my three favorite sunscreens and I'll go through them a little bit for you. So this first one here is by Aven and this sunscreen is a little bit more on the expensive side. I think this one was $25 or $30 for this little container, but it honestly lasts a really long time. And this one is SPF 50. It is an all chemical sunscreen. And when you put it on, it blends in completely into your skin and it doesn't leave any kind of of a residue or a cast. It is fairly moisturizing. The only thing I would say about this one is that if you do get it in your eyes by accident or if you're sweating later and you touch your eyes, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. So that's the only thing about chemical sunscreens that I really don't like is that if you do get them in your eyes, they are not that comfortable. So the reason I have three different sunscreens I'll get into in a minute, but this is my all chemical sunscreen. The second one that I have is this Ombrel SPF 60 by Garnier, and I really like this sunscreen. This is definitely the most moisturizing that I have. You can see that I've used up quite a bit of this, and I actually have another one in the drawer below where I keep some of my other toiletries. Um, but this sunscreen is really good if you have very dry skin. It's very good for the winter time, and a lot of times I won't even wear foundation. I will only wear sunscreen, especially if I'm working a long stretch and I just don't need to be getting myself all dolled up. Oftentimes, sunscreen is the only thing that I'll wear, and so this is a really good one if you're going to be doing that because it gives you kind of a nice glow without having to wear a whole bunch of extra stuff on your face. The third one I have, and this is my probably my absolute favorite sunscreen. I've repurchased this a couple of times already. This is the Aveeno Sensitive Skin Mineral Sunscreen, and it's SPF 50. And so this one has only mineral protection in it. There's no chemical um, sunscreens in here. This one does leave a little bit of a cast, but the nice thing about this one is that it's almost like a concealer in a way. It brightens your skin a little bit. I know it sounds weird because you're brightening your skin with like zinc, so it's very bright. <laughs> like it's quite on the white side, um, but I really like it. So this one's also very good for sensitive skin. They have kind of the same formulation for babies and for kids. So the reason I have the three sunscreens is because sometimes if I want a more mattified look or if I'm going to some sort of event or I need to be a little bit more photo ready, this is probably the best one to use a chemical one because it doesn't leave any cast. It doesn't make your face greasy. It just blends completely in. It is a really, really good sunscreen, but because it's expensive and because I don't need that kind of photo ready look every day, I don't wear this one every day. I save that one for vacations and things like that. This one here, the reason I have this one is like I said, if you have a little bit of a drier climate or it's like a really, really cold winter day, this is a really good one to use because it'll keep your skin more moisturized. And then this one is really good for pretty much any other day of the year. So the next important thing that I'm gonna tell you guys about that I use and I could not live without is my Cetaphil Moisturizing Facial Cream. So the most important thing if I'm gonna be wearing makeup or even if I'm not gonna be wearing makeup is a really good moisturizer. I'm finding, especially as I'm getting older, not that I'm super old, I'm in my early 30s, but I'm finding that as my skin does age a little bit, it does get a lot drier and I can't get away with wearing just foundation. And to have a moisturized face is such an integral part of any beauty routine. Your skin will thank you for it and you'll have a more healthy glow and you'll look like you've slept longer and you'll look more refreshed if you have more moisturized skin. So I absolutely love this Cetaphil moisturizing cream. I have tried the CeraVe moisturizing cream, which I'll show you guys. So I have tried the CeraVe moisturizing cream and uh, it's a little bit dusty. Um, this one I found was not moisturizing enough for my face. It's excellent for the body because my body doesn't tend to get as dry. So after the shower, I still want something that is dermatologist recommended and something that's healthy and has all of the good ingredients like the ceramides and the hyaluronic acid. But I want something that 
is a little bit more moisturizing on my face. So this one I put on my body every time I get out of the shower. This one is 10 times more moisturizing for the face. If you guys are in between and you've heard of how good both of these brands are because they're both excellent, if you want something that is more moisturizing, hands down, it is this one. So first of all, when you open the tubs, you can see the difference in how thick they are. This one is clearly really thick. You could empty it upside down and nothing would come out. This one is obviously not as thick and if you tipped it on its side for any length of time, it would start to run out. So this is definitely not as thick. And I'll kind of show you the difference here. All right, so I don't know if you can see the difference, but this is how watery the CeraVe is. It kind of just disappears in like two seconds and just blends in. And this is the Cetaphil. And it still feels moist, <laughs> like you have to rub it in forever. And it's so much more moisturizing. Like this area now feels like I just put some sort of water-based whatever on it. This one still <laughs> takes forever to rub in. So this one is definitely more moisturizing. So those are the first two items that I recommend having and that I cannot live without is a really good moisturizer and some sort of sunscreen. I wear a combination of those every single day, even when the sun isn't shining. Okay, so getting into makeup, this is my makeup case, and this isn't anything fancy. I think I just got it from a drugstore a little while ago. I really like the sleek case because if you bring it with you on vacation, it fits really well into your luggage because it's a nice rectangular kind of size, and it just fits really nicely like in the corner of your suitcase. So I'll go through here and tell you guys what I have in here. So this item is a Physician's Formula um, Serum, and it's called the Rosé All Day Tri-Phase Beauty beauty elixir. So if you give it a shake, then that's what it looks like. And this is really nice to put on after you've moisturized and before you use any makeup. And sometimes I'll do this if I want a little bit more of a glow or I really want my skin to look really moisturized. And it is non-comedogenic. I was worried that this might make me break out when I started using it, but I haven't had any problems like that. I am sort of a minimalist when it comes to my skincare and my makeup. I don't like to use a lot of crazy products or a lot of fancy anything on my face. Um, so this I was even hesitant to get, but the problem I was having was that my skin was so dry and this was before I switched to the Cetaphil um, moisturizing cream so I really needed something to help my skin be a little bit more plump and since I've switched to the Cetaphil I haven't had to use this as much but I do really like this and it was a little bit pricey so I'm trying to use it up and it has kind of a nice scent to it as well I'm not a big fan of putting fragranced items on my face but it does smell subtly of roses you guys have to excuse me I'm getting a bit of a cold so my voice is a little bit raspy today um, so the next thing I'll show you is, I imagine that I have another sunscreen. This is the Sunthera Face Sunscreen in a Stick, and this is SPF 60. I actually really, really like this sunscreen. I've used it on my face a couple of times, and it is great for vacation because you don't have to worry about chucking it in your checked luggage. You can bring it on your carry-on because it is not liquid. And this actually has a really nice, a really nice finish on your skin. I'll see if I can show you on my hand how it goes on. But I definitely recommend this if you guys need some sort of an easy, easy to pack um, sunscreen when you go on vacation. This is really excellent and it's fairly moisturizing as well. And I think this one is a combination. Oh no, this one is pure mineral. This is a pure mineral sunscreen. So let me just show you on my hand how it looks here. That's what it looks like on the hand. It doesn't leave any kind of a crazy white cast and it actually feels really nice. It's really moisturizing. If I could find this in a bottle format, I would definitely get it because I really, really like the formula that they've used in this. I actually like this better than the Aveeno if I'm looking for strictly a mineral sunscreen. This one I think looks better on the face than the Aveeno. So already you can tell that I'm not big on makeup and I'm actually more big on skin care and making my skin look and feel healthy. So that might be the theme for today's video. <laughs> so getting into the actual makeup bits, 
So this is one of the first items I have, and like I said, I'm not big on actual makeup products, and I really don't use a lot of makeup on my face. This I will use sometimes if I want a little bit of a bronzer or a little bit of a sun-kissed look, but I don't want it to be too heavy. It's very sheer. It's the L'Oreal Paris Lumi Glow Nude Highlighter Palette, and I pretty much only use these two here. Sometimes I'll use a little bit of the darker one if I want to contour a little bit, but because it is a little shiny, that's not the best for contouring. Um, and I'm fairly fair skinned, so these two usually work best for me. And I don't use this very often. In fact, I've thought about getting rid of it, but I do use it occasionally, so I hang on to it for that reason. When it comes to actually contouring, this is the one that I do use. This one here used to be just a matte, kind of a highlighter, I guess, and it actually broke, but it doesn't matter because I don't use that one anyways. Um, so the one that I do use to contour most often is this middle one. So that's what this actually looks like, and you can see that I've actually hit pan on this middle one here, and this one is really, really nice for a contour if you guys want something that isn't too dark. Um, it's even good for me, and I have fairly fair skin, but what I like about it is that it's matte and this one I've used literally I think for like two years so you can tell that I don't go through makeup really really quickly because it's lasted me forever and this is the physicians I think yeah physicians formula bronze booster if you guys are looking for it you can find this just at regular drugstores um, so getting into foundation this is the foundation that I've been really loving. I've actually used this before and then switched to a different one and then gone back to this one. And this is by L'Oreal. It's the True Match Lumi Healthy Luminous Makeup. This is in the color Light Porcelain Ivory. So this also has SPF 20, but of course you guys know that you can't rely on sunscreen in your makeup. You actually have to use a physical sunscreen on your face before you apply makeup. And I kind of use my makeup as almost more of a concealer. I only put foundation on certain parts of my face. I don't even cover my whole face with it just because I don't like the way my face looks with a full face of makeup. And when I put a full face of like really heavy foundation, I honestly just don't feel like myself. I don't like the way it looks. So I'm definitely a bit of a minimalist when it comes to makeup as well. I'm not the type of person who does makeup and then powder and then concealer and then more powder and then highlighter. Like I don't do that kind of thing. I just kind of stick to what's basic. So this one is really good if you have dry skin and uh, you can see a theme here that I really like things that help with dry skin. The most important thing to me is just to have a healthy youthful glow and to make sure that I don't have any fine lines or wrinkles showing up, which I usually don't. But after working a few night shifts, sometimes I definitely look about five years older, I think. <laughs> so if you wear makeup that helps you look a little bit younger, I think that's fabulous. Okay, so that's with the makeup on the back of my hand. Of course, it's a little bit, looks a little bit weird for the back of my hand. I don't know if it 100% matches. Massages completely into my skin and I really like it. So to blend my foundation into my face, I do use, what do you call these things? Oh my gosh, what are these things called? What is it called? A blending sponge? Anyways, this is what I use to apply my foundation to my face, but this is all I use and I just kind of dab it into my face um, in the places that I want so I don't go crazy with it, but I do like that it has the little tip on it so you can get into the little corners like around your eyes and your nose and things like that. A beauty blender, that's what this thing's called. So I really like using a beauty blender. I used to use a foundation brush and I found that if I'm not using a lot of foundation, then this thing does really well. If I'm blending, like if I want more coverage for like some kind of event where there's gonna be photography and stuff, then I will use a blending brush because I find I can get a more mattified kind of um, airbrushed look. But just for normal everyday, this is fantastic. And the first eyeshadow that I use that I really like is this CoverGirl one. It's called Sheerly Nudes. So I usually only use that nude color and then sometimes it's not showing up on camera very well, but this here is like a mauve kind of a taupe. It's almost got a little bit of a pink um, tint to it. And then to do the crease and the corners of my eyes, sometimes I'll use that darker color. And then the reason I have this little brush in here is because I sometimes do my eyebrows with that color as well. Like I said, I'm kind of a big minimalist even when it comes to makeup, so I don't actually have a specific eyebrow um, product, but if I do want to pencil in my eyebrows a little bit, I will use a combination of this light one and this brown one um, just to kind of get that a kind of more airbrushed natural effect. I don't like a really harsh eyebrow. And the other eyeshadow that I like is this one by Alme, and it's called The World Is My Oyster. Alme makes really nice products. This is like 
smooth as a baby's bottom. Like it feels like you're putting silk on your eyelids when you put it on. Yeah, so there's the three colors right there. So as you can tell, this is the darkest one. So even though it looks kind of dark in the palette, um, it's not very dark at all when it goes on. And they blend really nice and they give you a nice sheen and they're really beautiful. When it comes to mascara, I keep it really simple as well. I'm not one of these people who does like three or four coats of mascara. I just do one very, very light coat. But the ones I've been liking is this Maybelline Colossal Volume one and then the Maybelline Mega Plush Volume Express. So this is the brush for the Maybelline Colossal Volume. And it can make your eyelashes pretty thick if you put on a lot of coats. But like I said, I don't. I like just one really, really light coat. So that's the brush for this one. And this is the brush for the Maybelline um, Mega Plush Volume. Again, it's a pretty thick brush, but I don't apply a lot. This one definitely gives a more lighter, fluffier kind of a look, whereas the other one gives a little bit more of a heavy, kind of moisturized look, I guess. Um, I tend to use this one a little bit more because I find it's a little more natural when I'm trying to get um, a more natural look. So that's it for mascaras, and these last me forever because I don't put a lot on, like I said. So that's kind of about it for the makeups, and then I'm gonna get into the brushes that I have. That is literally all I have. I don't have a whole lot of products. So just to review one more time, one foundation, I have two mascaras, two different eyeshadow palettes, two palettes that I use to do contouring or highlighting and bronzing, and a sunscreen and then a little bit of a serum and a beauty blender. So in the corner of my bathroom I keep this really cute little glass container and I keep all of my makeup brushes. So I'll show you what makeup brushes I have and what I use them for just really quickly. So this is a really thick powder brush. I really like this one if I'm going to be applying any kind of a translucent powder which as you can see right now I don't have but in the past I have used them and sometimes I will invest in a powder or use a powder if I've got some kind of an event coming up and I want a really mattified look so that I'm not I don't have any kind of a shiny face or anything and I'm not going to go through the brands of these brushes because they're all from different places and uh, I don't really care about the brands as long as I get the job done these are my two eyeshadow brushes that I use to apply eyeshadow and these ones are a little bit more fluffy um, so this one here is really good as a blending brush you can see there's still a little bit of eyeshadow in there and this one is really good to actually just apply your eyeshadow. This is the brush that I use to do the crease and the corners. This is a foundation brush. It's kind of a stippling brush and I really like this one for, like I said, if I wanna apply more of a airbrushed look with my foundation, this is fabulous. And you kinda of just take it and you just kinda of blend it out into your face and it's fabulous. I really, really like it. This is probably the more expensive, the most expensive brush I have. It's by Lise Watier and I will suggest that if you want an airbrushed look, get a good stippling brush because there are some really crappy stippling brushes out there. And so this is probably the only like expensive brush I've invested in. All the other ones are very basic and plain. They're just from Walmart or a drugstore. This is my angle brush that I use for applying any bronzer or contouring. It's excellent for getting underneath your cheekbones. And, and the other two items that I have left over, so there's just a pair of tweezers that I use um, pretty frequently. And then the last thing I have is actually a spoolie brush. The way that I apply my mascara is I actually do a really light coat of mascara and then I go through with the spoolie brush and I brush out my eyelashes so that there's no clumps or lumps because I like a really natural look. So I really like having a spoolie brush in my collection and I use this just about every single day. That's just love. So that's it you guys. I hope you really enjoyed this little makeup collection video. For once I didn't have to declutter anything because I actually have it pretty culled down to the bare essentials. And if you have any questions about anything that you saw in this video, please let me know and I will do my best to link things down below um, or to give you item names of anything that I missed. And I hope you guys all have a fabulous day and we'll see you next time. And you keep on